how to improve your intonation on the cello. Well, let's get this problem solved. I'll make you play from this. To this. Today we're diving deep into an essential aspect of cello playing. Finger placement and pressure, which is the key to perfect intonation. By the end of this video, you'll have a clear understanding of how to place your fingers correctly on the fingerboard, apply the right pressure and achieve a great intonation. So let's get started. Let's start with the first segment. The importance of proper finger placement. The foundation of great cello playing lies in your left hand technique. The right hand as well, obviously. But there are other lessons that I have on my YouTube channel, so you just need to search for it. When your fingers are correctly positioned, you'll find it easier to achieve clear and resonant tones. So to start with, placing your fingers too close to the neighboring string can cause a muffing or a buzzing sound. On the opposite way, if your fingers are too far away from the fingerboard, then also you'll have problems with intonation. I'll show you an example right now. Proper finger placement is crucial because it directly affects the pitch and tone of the notes that you produce. All right, let's go now to the second segment, which is finding the right pressure. So now that we have tackled finger placement, let's talk a little bit about the pressure. Applying the correct amount of pressure is very important for producing a clear and a resonant sound. But not only pressure, also finger hammering and finger articulation. I have a slogan that I always use. Bad articulation is bad intonation. Let's see some examples over here. When pressing too lightly, your notes may sound weak or unclear. So on the other hand, too much pressure can lead to a very tiring sound and unnecessarily tension in your hand and arm so you can get injuries. So finding the right pressure is like finding the sweet spot on your cello. You want to press down firmly enough to create a clean sound, but not so hard that your fingers feel uncomfortable or tense. Segment three, maintaining good intonation. Good intonation is the art of playing in tune. Obviously, of course. Well, it's that that transforms a collection of notes into a beautiful melody or music. And also very pleasant to hear both for you and for the public, for the listener. Segment four, the most important thing, solutions and the exercises that I'm gonna assign you. So now that we understand the importance of the right finger placement, the right amount of finger pressure and intonation, let's explore now some practical solution and exercises to improve your skills. One effective exercise is the slow and steady approach. Play a series of long sustained notes while focusing on your finger placement and applying consistent pressure. This exercise helps to develop muscle memory and control. Another helpful exercise is finger agility drills. Fiyar's methods and books are great for that. I have a bunch of tutorials that I cover each Fayard lesson. Also, play scales and arpeggios. And gradually increasing the speed, maintaining the accuracy. These exercises will help you for finger placement, speed and intonation. 
Let me show you now just a series of exercises that I would recommend you to do. So let's go. So here we are with some exercise. I'm gonna use a very simple exercise, but it's better to keep it simple because like this, you really can focus on one thing and not, you know, immediately things at once like shiftings and string crossing and so on. So I'm gonna start with just a simple C major scale, just one octave. Then we go to the arpeggios and then I'll show you a couple of exercises from the VR book that I always do. I just showed a very simple, very easy scale, but many, probably for many of you, this is very useful. There are great scale books. There is a book called The Art of Scales, which is great for beginners and intermediate uh, cellists. There is the Galamian scale system, which is already advanced, but it's also very good. They have others, Jan Polski, the Call Flash system. So that's up to you, but scales you have to do, and the arpeggios as well. Now we come to the study part, so the etude part. One of my favorite ones that I give to my students is the Popper. I think it's Opus 73, easy etudes for cello. I think there are 15 of them. They're very good. Let me just show you an example, how one of them works. Sebastian Lee, the 40 progressive and melodical etudes. And one exercise goes like this. the famous Feyer exercise number one from the book Studies of the Young Cellist. By the way, I have a tutorial about this. An old video, very bad video actually, but still it's worth to watch it. And so on. Anyways, in the VR, they are not so beautiful etudes, they're not so melodical, but it's very good, you know, to train. It's like you go to the gym and you train your muscles, you become stronger. VR is great for this. So anyway, here you have a couple of examples. Of course, probably your teacher has more etudes and so on. There is Dotzauer, there is a Piatti method, there are so many things that you can research and you can ask around. So here comes my conclusion. By paying attention to your left hand technique and practicing the exercises that I shared with you, you will notice a huge improvement in your cello playing and intonation. And always remember, mastering these skills takes time and dedication. But with perseverance, you will go to the next level as a cellist. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up Subscribe if you're not subscribed yet, if you want to see more tutorials like this one or other musical adventures. Now that we were talking about scales, if you want to level up your scale playing, why not to watch this video over here where I really go in depth about scales. So if you want to become better at scales, you don't want to miss this one over here. I'll see you in the scale video. Bye bye.